Hi guys, Blackbox here. In this video, I will be talking about approach charts and how to get the correct approach minimum out of these charts. So before we look at the different minimas, let us have a look at what the decision height or the minimum descent altitude actually means. So the minimum descent altitude, which is measured from mean sea level and referenced by QNH, or the decision height, height above ground, is the point at which the pilot must decide whether the approach can be continued or a missed approach must be performed. So let's first have a look at the criteria which determine whether or not we can continue the approach or if we have to do a go around. So here we are approaching runway 26 right in Munich. We'll just uh, descend to the category 1 minimum, which is uh, 1650 feet. And uh, be aware of the fact that the category 1 approach is uh, the approach at airports which is most commonly used. 400. 100 above. So we're slowly approaching the 300 minimum. And at the minimum, I will pause the simulator. Minimum. So for each position approach type, there's certain rules which uh, tell you what visual reference is required in order to continue the approach. So for category one, for example, you will need three consecutive approach lights and also one crossbar. The same applies for category two, and that is because the category one approach, which is uh, landed manually every time, and the category two approach can also be landed manually. So you will need one crossbar to help you with the orientation when looking outside. So let us now start with the category one approach. And for this, you'll need a visibility of at least 550 meters. And now you can see with the approach lights switched on, three or more lights are visible from the approach light system. And also one crossbar is faintly visible. And so that is enough um, for the visual reference in the category one approach. And so here we can continue the approach. However, let's say the visibility dropped down to 300 meters. Now you don't have the required visual reference. And so you would have to perform a go around. So let's uh, approach the runway a little further and um, descend down to 100 feet height. And that decision height is uh, quite common for the category two approach. So here we are, 100 feet radio altimeter, and we can see more than three approach lights of the approach light system, and also we can see one crossbar. And again, the required visual reference is uh, met, and so we can continue. Now we'll approach the runway even more and get down to 50 feet radio altimeter. And so now we're at the category three alpha minimum here, you only need to see three consecutive runway lights. It doesn't matter if they're the center line lights or the edge lights or barrette lights. Three lights is enough, which uh, in this case is uh, confirmed. And so again, we can continue the approach. So let's have a look at this. We're at uh, 22 feet, let's say, radial altimeter. Um, that is the category three alpha fail operational minimum, meaning that if one autopilot fails, the other one can continue the landing automatically. And uh, nevertheless, we are unable to see three consecutive lights. We can't even see one single light. And so here we would have to do a go around. So now we get to the category three Bravo approach. And that means um, if the aircraft has the technical capability to perform such an approach, and is certified for that, then you can even descend down to a lower minimum. So here we are just before touchdown. And um, so we can see one consecutive flight. And that is enough to actually continue in the category three Bravo approach. In fact, 
the curious thing is that at touchdown, if you're flying with like a big jet, 777 or 747, even at touchdown with no decision height, you will not require to see anything. And that is because of the pitch of the aircraft, the cockpit will be quite high above the ground. And that's the reason why only after nose gear touchdown, you will have to require to see one centerline light. Now, since the aircraft is doing a automatic rollout, that is not a problem. Now, this automatic rollout function is one of the big reasons why there's a difference between Category 3 Alpha and Category 3 Bravo certified aircraft. But uh, this is taking things a little bit too far uh, for this video. So now that we've talked about the visual requirements at uh, decision height or minimum descent altitude, let's get back to the approach charts and have a look where to find the appropriate minimas. And that, of course, is then measured by the radio altimeter. Okay, so here we have the approach chart, ILS 26 right in Munich. And at the bottom left corner, we can see all kinds of different minimas. And uh, since the category one approach is the most commonly used, we can have a look at the corresponding minimum. So here we can see the minimum is 1650 feet. Uh, as I said, it's referenced to mean sea level. And so the little number 200 and dash 550 means that the minimum MDA is um, 200 feet above ground and the minimum required visibility is 550 meters. Now you cannot just simply set 200 feet radial altimeter as the minimum because at that point you're not over the flat runway surface but still over rugged ground and that means that the radial altimeter could fluctuate quite strongly. So again, for non-position approaches and category one approaches, you will see a minimum descent altitude and that is referenced to Q and H, mean sea level. So let us insert that value now into the MCDU of the A320. So we'll type in 1650 and then enter that into the prompt MDA. Now, of course, uh, in Boeing planes, this is done a little bit different. And so I thought I might as well show you how it's done there. So at the corresponding panel, you'll see radio and barrow setting on the outer knob. And on the inner knob, you can uh, then enter the required minimum. So in this case, we'll just rotate the button until we have 1650 feet and it says Varro and that means minimum descent altitude. All right, let's now have a look at the category two minimum. And um, you can see here it says 106 feet RA and RA stands in this case for a radio altimeter. People have been asking me, how do you know when to use the category two minimum? Well, that's quite simple to answer. Um, either it is uh, being transmitted by ATIS or air traffic control will tell you that low visibility operations category two or three are in use. Another question that I get quite often is, why if the weather is uh, at marginal category one minimum, why wouldn't uh, air traffic control or the airport use category two or category three approaches? Now here the answer is that when you use category three or category two low visibility operations, then you have to increase the protection area around the localizer and glide slope antennas. And that is uh, so that other aircraft and vehicles on the ground don't distort the um, localizer and glide slope beams which could be quite dangerous for aircraft um, doing automatic landings and being close to the ground. And so if the protection areas have to be made a lot bigger for category two and three, then it'll take longer for aircraft to leave and vacate the runway and be out of the protected area. 
So air traffic control has to increase the separation, which means less aircraft can uh, land and depart, uh, meaning holding, delays, etc. And so low visibility operations will only be activated when they're actually necessary. All right, so let's get back to the category two minimum and insert that into the MCDU. So we will type in 106 into the scratch pad and then we have to be careful and make sure we set it into the prompt decision height. For the Boeing jets, you'll set the outer rotary knob to radio, then dial in the minimum. On the primary flight display, you can now see 106 feet radio telling you that it is according to the radio altimeter. So now let's talk about the category three minimum. And there in the chart, you'll see the word company. And that just simply means that the company will establish the required minimas. And that is of course dependent on the equipment of the aircraft, which then of course has to be functioning during flight in order to use those uh, established minimas. So let's say we have a category three Bravo minimum of 22 feet. And again, we'll just simply insert 22 into the prompt decision height. The same applies to the Boeing jets, just simply insert 22 feet into the radio altimeter. Should you prefer to fly the category three Bravo without decision height, then just simply type no in the prompt decision height. And in the Boeing jet, you just simply dial all the way to the left until the number radio disappears. Right, quite a complicated topic, right guys? Just remember that if you're flying a non-precision approach or a category one approach, you'll be setting the minimum descent altitude, i.e. MDA or bar row in the Boeing planes. And only when you come across low visibility operations, you'll be required to set a decision height or in case of the Boeing planes, a radio altimeter height. So that's all there is to it. And I do hope you have enjoyed this video, maybe learned one or two things. If you have any further questions, post them down below in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer as fast as I can. So as always, thank you for watching and have happy landings.